benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare coverage helpline. Call, check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-608-9900. That's 1-800-608-9900 now. Welcome back to John Bachman now, Bianca De La Garza, right here alongside of me. The FBI, Bianca, today clarifying their position on the motive behind this Texas synagogue hostage situation. In a statement released by the FBI, it states, quote, this is a terrorism-related matter in which the Jewish community was targeted and is being investigated by the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Previously, the FBI agent in charge, Matt DeSarno, made some comments on Saturday saying, quote, we do believe from our engagement with this subject that he was singularly focused on one issue and it was not specifically related to the Jewish community, but we are continuing to work to find the motive. It was the last part of Bianca that caught so many people off guard and thought maybe it was a bad way to phrase it. Yeah, and obviously there, there's a uh a lot more behind this story, John. In fact, today we're learning more about the suspect and his ties to a radical group with a lengthy and dangerous history. Joining us now on the program, nationally known expert on counterterrorism and national security expert John Rosamondo. John, it's great to have you here with this report that you've shared with us. Thanks a lot, Bianca. Uh, we found out uh, through our research that uh, Faisal Akram, the man responsible for the uh, kidnapping, was a member of a group called Tablighi Jamaat, which has been uh, linked to uh, terrorism by al-Qaeda. Don't forget the uh, San Bernardino shooting back in 2015. The uh, two people who were involved with that uh, were involved with the organization. Um, Tablighi Jamaat was just banned by Saudi Arabia uh, because right. it's a, uh, an incubator for terrorism. Well, John, let me let me stop you there because bells go off. Now, we want to show everyone your article is up on Newsmax.com right now. It's a, our platinum section. You can go on there, folks, and you can see this article. These facts are alarming. When you hear Saudi Arabia, and this was just in December, banning a group, you know, bells have to go off. They said that this group was so dangerous. Yet we had uh, President Biden and we had, you know, uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas saying, well, we don't, we don't know his motive. But in your report, you're saying, this guy was well known in the UK. He was the president of a radicalized mosque in England, and he was known as being part of demonstrations that were anti Semitic. So, where's the disconnect here if you're finding out all these things that look like, yes, this is a radicalized person? Well, let's put it this way the uh, Bureau and uh, the Democratic Party are uh, owned by. Uh, the Islamist groups like the Council on American Islamic Relations, which the FBI and a federal judge uh, said back in 2008 and 2009 was tied with Hamas. Uh, they, uh, under Obama, they purged a lot of the uh, agents who uh, were on top of this in the Bush years. So mm -hmm. this is all political posturing. And, you know, you talk about being owned. In some ways, some of the mainstream media is a little bit owned, too, because you're reporting all of this. But if you look at, you know, Google this Texas synagogue today, we're hearing more about, you know, the rabbi's training still, which, of course, very important, and it may have saved him. But all of the information you're uncovering on Newsmax.com about this radicalized suspect um, and his ties to a massive organization here for known terror uh, uh, things, it's just not even there. So what's going on with that when you have these reports that aren't even going to be disseminated to the Americans? Again, you know, these uh, same uh, extremist uh, Islamist groups uh, are uh, owning the, uh, the media. They uh, don't, aren't interested in digging into the established ties between you know, these groups and, uh, you know, radical jihadists uh, like Hamas, like, uh, you know, uh, Jamaat Islami, which uh, is connected with uh, Tablighi Jamaat or any of these other things, because they, you know, it's, it's kind of the woke prejudice that these people were Christians and uh, this guy was like a neo-Nazi. We'd be hearing all sorts of things. But, sure. You know, that's a different narrative here, right? And exactly. we know we know 
he was a subject of interest, but in 2020, MI5 decided he no longer posed a threat. He got here through New, New York, JFK Airport a few weeks ago, John. We got to find out how he got here, how he got a gun. And uh, we thank you for your reporting. Folks, you got to check out the article on Newsmax.com. And John, we'll have you back as we continue to watch this story. Thank you.